Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and today Battle of Five was finally revealed. Not only does it look stunning from a visual standpoint, which is to be expected from a dice game, but honestly, the thing that I'm most excited about are all of the changes that they're making to the gameplay. And so first of all, the one thing that I'm most ecstatic about is that it looks like DICE is going to be focusing more on getting squads and teams to work together. Now admittedly, this is something that they always say is a key part of Battlefield. It's all about the teamwork and that team play dynamic. But honestly, for most Battlefield games, that's not usually how it plays out. Most gamers are going to just do their own thing, and there's no real incentive to stick with your squad, but that is going to be changing with Battlefield 5. The first big adjustment is that health regeneration is no longer going to be as prominent. Before, you could run off and do your own thing as the engineer class, take someone out, and if you drop down to 20 HP, you could get all the way back up to full if you, as long as you just kind of hid in the corner for a couple of seconds, and then you could get right back in the thick of the action. Well now if you do that very same thing, you may only regenerate up to let's say 40 HP for example. This means that if you don't have a healer next to you, if you're doing the whole lone wolf, you're gonna have a lot harder time being successful the next time you come in contact with the enemy. This also extends on over into resupplying your ammunition. In past games, they gave you a lot of rounds at your disposal every single time that you spawned on in. The result of this is that you never really needed to rely on your support players to resupply said ammo. That is going to be changing in Battlefield 5. If once again you go off and do the whole lone wolf tactic where you're just completely ignoring everyone around you, you might be able to take out a couple people here and there, and there will be other ways for you to resupply that ammo. I believe you can walk up to a fallen enemy and take their supply, but it would just be a lot easier to stick with your squad mates. It really seems like DICE is trying to implement some actual game mechanics to get people to work together and make it a much more tactical and methodical experience which I think is fantastic. Another big takeaway that I got from this reveal is that it seems like the gameplay itself is going to be a lot slower paced and methodical compared to past Battlefield games. Now admittedly based off of the trailer, that doesn't seem to be the case whatsoever. The trailer is chaotic, there's an insane amount of things going on screen, but I'm hoping that that was just the trailer. If we base it off of the changes that they're making to the gameplay, it tells a completely different story. One of the reasons why I say this is that now now to do actions, you have to go through a physical animation. You want to get health and regenerate, you have to actually go through an animation to start the regeneration process. You want to get ammo, you have to go up to an ammo box and go through an animation. There's no longer going to be a health box that all of a sudden just magically regenerates your health when you're near it. You now have to make the decision. Do I go for the health regen, go through a quick animation leaving myself vulnerable, or do I wait for the other people that I'm assuming are just around the corner to try to take me out. These are things you're now going to have to consider. Another reason why I say this is that they're adding in a brand new mechanic which could be a complete game changer which is called fortifications. Fortifications are literally going to allow you and your squad mates to create objects and structures on the map itself. You want to create a foxhole? You now have every ability to do so. If tanks have been a big issue for your team and you know that they're going to start to push towards your objective, we'll create some dragon's teeth, some objects that will slow down their progress or make it so that they can't even get onto the objective with the tank itself. If you know that your right flank is completely exposed, well instead of just ignoring it, create a sandbag wall. Like I said, this could be one of the biggest changes that DICE has ever made to the Battlefield franchise because of this new dynamic. The reason why I'm so excited about this new fortification system is because I think it's going to solve two different problems. One of them is that now people will have incentive to actually defend locations. This also solves one of the biggest problems with the Battlefield franchise, which is what happens when destruction goes too far. If we look back at Bad Company 2, for example, Arica Harbor, Practically every single building was destructible, and that was the reason why I fell in love with that game and that map specifically. Being able to take out a wall and taking out the guy directly behind it is one of the coolest things that you're able to do in the Battlefield franchise. The problem with it though is that halfway through a match, now every building is destroyed and in the rubbled states. 
This has some negative impacts on the gameplay itself. Not only do you not have the satisfaction of being able to destroy anything more, that dynamic gameplay halfway through a match is now completely gone, but also you don't have any more cover, or as much cover as you used to, to be able to move from objective to objective. By adding in a fortification system, that solves that problem entirely. That building that you and your teammates were defending the entire match has been destroyed by a tank? That's alright, rebuild it essentially with some sandbag walls. Not only will this now give you more cover when you're defending, but also on offense it gives you something to now destroy, bringing in more of that dynamic that we know and love. And while it remains to be seen how all of this is going to be impacting the game in the long term, it could be terrible. It could be a clunky mess poorly implemented that no one uses. I'm really cross my fingers that DICE creates something special here because it has the potential, at least on paper, to completely change the way that we play Battlefield for the better. The one thing that I'm probably most ecstatic about though with this reveal is that we've now learned that every single one of the weapons is going to have its own semi-predictable recoil patterns. If I had to take a guess, it's going to be very similar to like what it was back in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. You could master those weapons because they were sort of predictable. You knew that this one in particular was going to drift up and to the right, or up and to the left. It wasn't pinpoint like accuracy every single time, there was a little bit of deviation in that recoil pattern, but you kind of had a general idea of how it was going to perform. This essentially allows players to learn the ins and outs of every single one of the weapons in the game and master these weapons. It really seems like DICE is trying to increase the skill ceiling in Battlefield 5, and I think that's fantastic news. By making these weapons more accurate and precise and by adding in a predictable recoil pattern, not only will this add more longevity to the game because now players have all these weapons to learn, every single time that you jump on in, there's a new weapon to explore and understand its recoil pattern, but also I've been really hoping that DICE would increase the skill ceiling in the next Battlefield game, and that seems the direction that they're taking, and I am 100% on board. Now one thing that has caused a bit of a ruckus in the community though is that it looks like DICE is taking customization to the extreme. In past Battlefield games, there really wasn't any way for you to make your character look unique and different from all of the other characters in the game. There were a few options here and there, but on average, if you were playing as the recon for a specific faction, you look like every recon from that faction. That's not going to be the case in Battlefield 5. From what they showed off, it looks like this customization is going to be extensive where it can pretty much change anything you want. Your hairstyle, your hair color, the face of your character, you want to make it male, female, you want to have paint, war paint, you want to be able to have prosthetic arms for example. These are things that you're going to be able to unlock with the in-game progression. Now the reason why a fair amount of people are upset about this is that it doesn't look like this is going to be an accurate representation of what happened during World War II. A lot of people were expecting that this is going to be a perfect portrayal of these battles. That doesn't seem to be the case. A really good example of this is uh, the woman character that we see during the trailer that hits someone with a cricket bat and also has a prosthetic arm. Another good example of this is the character that jumps through a window with what looks to be a katana on his back. Now I'm sure these objects and this sword for example was used by a few people during World War II but it probably wasn't standard issue and so it kind of takes them away from that immersion. Now personally I'm not too bothered by it as long as they don't take it to the extreme. I understand that this is a video game, it's meant to be fun, it's meant to be entertaining and I've never seen the Battlefield franchise as the history channel. I've never expected this to be the perfect representation of what happened during these battles. But I know a lot of people and I can completely understand where they're coming from for why they would be upset by it. There's also some really cool smaller additions that they're adding into the game. There's going to be penetration if you use a pistol for example, it probably isn't going to penetrate through the wall. But if you use an LMG, you can rip through those walls and take people out that were hiding directly behind it. They're also adding in animations for reviving your teammates and also to be able to drag your teammates into cover. This is another reason why I think that gameplay is going to slow down a bit. You can't can't just charge up your paddles or kind of stick some with a needle and they're all of a sudden back to full HP and on their feet. You're now going to have to go through an animation which leaves you a lot more vulnerable. They're also adding in a shockwave mechanic. This has me a bit skeptical. Now cinematically, it looks incredible. During the trailer, we see the guy get knocked down after a huge explosion. He didn't take any damage, it didn't look like, but he's knocked prone, which of course is going to leave him vulnerable to everyone around him. 
The reason why I'm not really sold on this idea is that, well, once again, cinematically, it's probably an awesome experience. But if this happened every single round and you were just getting constantly knocked down on your feet, that's gonna get annoying quickly. If nade spam is as bad as it was in past Battlefield games at release, imagine this taking it to the next level. And then lastly, DICE is finally getting rid of premium. This has been something that the community has been asking forever now. No longer are you going to have to spend $50 to experience all of the post-release content to get all the maps and all of the weapons. Now imagine there is going to be microtransactions. They do need to make money to be able to fund that future developments. But as long as they can keep the community together and as long as those microtransactions isn't pay to win, and they specifically said that there isn't going to be any pay to win in the next Battlefield game, uh, this is fantastic news. All in all though, I cannot wait to learn more about Battlefield 5. The trailer did leave a bit to be desired, especially when we compare it to the reveal trailer of Battlefield 1, but everything that we've heard gameplay wise and all the changes that they're adding into the game makes me incredibly excited. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about the reveal. Are you excited about all the gameplay changes? Are you disappointed by the direction that DICE is taking? Let me know down below in the comment section. Uh, but yeah, until tomorrow. Have a good one and take it easy.